um, really pleased to uh, be having this introductory webinar today to, um, to introduce um, supplier partners of our global uh, member companies uh, to Wash for Work and uh, um, some of the, the tools uh, that we have um, uh, related to the, the WASH pledge uh, that many of you have signed or are considering signing. Um, also, um, uh, the <clears throat> um, supplier working group that we have uh, newly set up this year uh, and how that's progressing, uh, the type of support that, uh, that we're, we're looking to provide. Um, and also, some insights really into some of the direction of, of travel on, on new pressures um, in the supply chains of, of global companies really driving this um, action and acceleration of water sanitation and hygiene access um, uh, across uh, various supply chains. So really looking forward to getting into this discussion. And uh, from all of your hellos, I'm feeling so, an energetic group here. So please feel free to use the chat function or raise hands if there's questions or comments um, or ideas, um, uh, really looking forward to uh, your, your feedback as well. So on our agenda today, a brief introduction of the Wash for Work platform and its, uh, its purpose, um, the uh, increasing importance of wash in the supply chain for uh, the acceleration of our global goals of water sanitation and hygiene access for all uh, by 2030. Um, some, um, some of the, the tools that, uh, that we have been um, compiling this year uh, for WASH pledge uh, implementation and some other support tools that we have across the, the network um, that you might want to be aware of um, as you dive into your WASH implementation journeys. Um, and, and then we'll spend a bit, a bit of time talking about uh, the membership in, in WASH for Work and um, how you can best uh, leverage that uh, as a WASH pledge signatory. So let's jump in. So we, uh, we are part of a, a broader network um, of the United Nations Global Combat, uh, the, the largest global corporate sustainability initiative. And the CEO water mandate uh, is the water stewardship initiative of the UN Global Compact. Um, and WASH for Work is the um, uh, water access and water sanitation and hygiene uh, access um, initiative of the CEO water mandate to um, fulfill the commitments of companies towards their water stewardship goals around water quality, water quantity, and access. Next slide, please. Um, so our um, uh, platform is, is really meant to um, support uh, the CEO water mandates six um, commitments, which you'll see on the left hand side and include water stewardship across direct operations in the supply chain and watershed um, through collective actions uh, uh, amongst companies and global stakeholders, public policy, community engagement and transparency. Next slide, please. We also support uh, WASH pledge implementation. And um, many of you may know that the WASH pledge uh, is uh, an initiative that was launched by the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, the WBCSD in 2013. Uh, the WBCSD is also a founding member of the WASH for Work um, platform together with the CEO water mandate. Um, and the WASH pledge commitment uh, is a commitment of companies uh, to implement access to safe water sanitation and hygiene um, at all premises uh, within a three-year time frame. Um, <clears throat> we have further expanded that over time to include um, the communities where companies operate related to um, workers and, and where they live um, and uh, across uh, supply chains and value chains. Next slide, please. So we are a, a business-led multi-stakeholder um, initiative, as you can see here, uh, made up of global companies and WASH expert stakeholders. Next slide, please. And we were, um, uh, um, the initiative was formed in, in 2016, that's, really for that reason, to bring was. together companies um, with WASH expert stakeholders uh, really uh, to, to help identify um, and connect companies to um, WASH implementation partners. Next slide, please. So in the um, 
in the <clears throat> first years of the uh, the initiative, there was a lot of focus on developing the business case for investing in WASH as a corporate water stewardship um, priority. Uh, many of the investments in in, in WASH um, companies were were keen to uh, really show both the financial return on investment um, as well as other co-benefits um, uh, of investments in WASH. Um, we also have collated uh, evolving best practice on, on how companies are providing that act, um, access and the benefits that they're seeing across different um, sectors and geographies. And in the last um, two years, uh, there's been a marked shift towards wash and climate um, resilience. And we'll um, spend a little bit of time on that um, uh, later in this meeting. And so the current work program of Wash for Work um, is, is focused in these four areas. And we're gonna focus on um, leading practice on wash in the supply chain and wash implementation support um, for supplier partners in particular. But we will also um, share with you some of the new work around um, uh, accounting and reporting and, and standardized method for that, uh, as well as um, uh, some of the new uh, thinking and um, required actions for climate resilience and climate impacts on um, the continuity and reliability of uh, water sanitation and hygiene services for workers. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so our, our work on, on WASH in the supply chain, a working group that we launched uh, this year, uh, was really to take stock on, on how um, companies' approaches to uh, wash in the supply chain and, and work, it, work with supply chain partners has evolved over the past um, couple of years. Um, and we plan to um, capture these learnings uh, in an in insights report that we will launch in, in January to really share, share the learnings on um, um, global company supplier engagement um, on wash and, uh, and the support mechanisms um, that different companies are uh, providing. Um, we also have been piloting a support program um, for supplier partners specifically, and uh, this has been in partnership uh, with Xylem. Uh, and I think many of you joining today are within Xylem's um, supply chain um, partnership. So welcome to all of you. And we, we see this as a, as a really huge opportunity uh, to have impact on our global goals for water sanitation and hygiene, the sheer volume of impact by implementing um, uh, consistent practices uh, across supply chains and, and value chains. So really excited to have you all here and on this journey uh, together. And maybe um, just before we go into the next part of the program, I'd like to ask Katrina from Xylem if, uh, if you would say a few words, Katrina. Yeah, sure. So hi, everyone. So yeah, just mirroring what Cheryl said. I mean, thank you for, for those that are attending. It's really important to us to have you here today. So I am our Global um, Procurement Sustainability Director. Uh, very new to this role, not new to Xylem. I've been with Xylem for about six years, and um, always within the, the procurement function. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, why are we here? I mean, it goes without saying that Xylem is committed to sustainability. You know, solving water is our mission. And WASH is an integral part of this, and it's an integral part of our supply chain strategy. Um, and because it's absolutely core you know, to our values and it's part of our water mandate, it's of huge importance to us in procurement and supply chain that our supply partners care about this and are as passionate about water as we are. It's a, you know, a big reason why we choose to partner with who we partner, um, you know, and it's part of our commitment to help our suppliers grow in return and I'd say we do actively seek suppliers who have similar values to us uh, we see this as an opportunity um, not only to help solve these problems but also to gain you know competitive advantage together and um, so yeah that's just kind of setting the scene and obviously happy to answer any questions that any of you have um, about the pledge I was just going to say as well I put in the chat a bit earlier but I know we've had some people join if you wouldn't mind um, any suppliers that we have on the line if you could just let me know what your who your company is just so I can understand who's on the call and so we can reach out to you separately so thank you thank you Katrina so let's uh, let's move forward Great. So um, in this working group this year on wash in the supply chain, um, we uh, we have some 
uh, insights to share really on, on how uh, leading practice is evolving amongst global companies in, in terms of how they're partnering with supply chain partners on um, water sanitation and hygiene access, but also some of the, the common challenges that, um, that our platform you know, hopes to continue to, um, to work on uh, together as a, as a collective um, to, to be able to realize the impact that, that we're all looking for. Um, so in, in terms of, of leading practice, um, many global companies now now, um, have a requirement in supplier codes of conduct and increasingly also in contracting um, to, uh, to also uh, apply similar approaches um, to water stewardship, in including um, water sanitation and hygiene access uh, within operations, but, but also within communities where workers um, are living um, and your own supply chains. Um, Global companies are also providing um, uh, different incentives and, uh, and support mechanisms um, for suppliers and, and uh, through the Wash for Work platform, we, we really hope to um, build on that and, uh, and be able to provide a, a broader set of, uh, of support, but also partnership opportunities to, to be able to, to move uh, together in this journey. Uh, we're noticing that um, behavior change and gender equity has become a priority um, uh, for all, for the, the supply chain um, as companies have, have really learned from their own journeys on, on implementation of uh, water sanitation and, and hygiene access across their own operations. Um, the, uh, the investment in infrastructure is, is not enough and behavior changes is really key in, um, in many different uh, geographies and contexts where um, uh, social norms um, you know, have, um, have been a barrier to uh, to sustain the access and uh, use of, of water sanitation and, and hygiene facilities. Um, also the, um, the uh, particular role of, uh, of women and, uh, and gender equity um, in also in ensuring uh, safely managed sanitation and uh, hygiene and water supply. Um, we've also noticed that, um, uh, that there's been a development of, of sector specific wash um, policies and solutions. Obviously, um, uh, companies can be uh, in context for water sanitation hygiene can be very different uh, across different sectors. And, and so trying to collate those, those learnings on the, the solutions that are particular to different sectors and, and geographies. In terms of common challenges that have been identified, um, there's still quite a data gap and information gap, really both on um, the, the size of the gap in, in terms of getting to universal access um, uh, in, the, in the workplace, you know, in, in terms of where, where we are, how far we are away from that goal and why. Um, and, uh, and also in particular uh, to uh, the supply chain and, and value chains where, um, uh, where there's uh, different owners of, of operations, um, a, a linked up way, you know, to share information uh, again on uh, how we're progressing towards the goal of, of universal access. Um, another challenge has been standardized um, reporting on wash actions and targets of, of suppliers and, you know, particularly where um, uh, supplier partners are part of many different um, supply chains and, and value chains of, of global companies and, you know, different uh, reporting requests have, uh, have made it difficult and created a reporting burden. Um, and so um, really a, a standardized approach is, um, is something that has been identified and we'll talk about um, some progress on that a, a little bit later, um, but also that it hasn't been a requirement um, so far uh, for many global companies to ask their um, uh, supplier partners to report on this specific element of, um, of WASH access. Um, however, <laughs> the um, global sustainability reporting community um, is, is starting to um, ask different questions of global companies to, to be able to um, uh, report on the risk exposure linked to wash in the supply chain with much more um, spe specificity and um, numbers on the size of the gap and, and what actions are being taken towards that, that progress um, to be considered um, a, a leader in, um, in corporate sustainability. <clears throat> and, and finally, um, the evolving you know, climate and health risks that we've, we've been seeing um, are, are having an impact on the existing investments um, in water sanitation and hygiene access and really putting them at risk. And um, there's been a call of the global WASH um, stakeholder community for the last couple of years to um, understand these risks and look at um, 
potentially new solutions um, in order to ensure the continuity um, of, of services and uh, uh, resilience for the future. Any questions? I'll just pause here. <clears throat> Okay, let's keep moving. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, the, the size of the problem, I think that those, um, you know, companies that are, uh, are sort of new to uh, really understanding or, or seeing their role um, in, in providing access to water sanitation and hygiene are always quite surprised <laughs> by these, these big numbers of, of people that still don't have access to safely managed um, services and and uh, and really it's uh, it's not um, often because there there isn't the um, the willingness um, or even um, uh, investment um, uh, and, and resourcing available uh, to provide these services but uh, really the the issues come down to the issues with the water cycle water stress um, now you know climate uh, risks uh, health risks you know and and, and uh, of course social norms um, in different um, communities and, and contexts so um, these are systemic issues that that need to be um, addressed but uh, we have had a, a history now of, um, of breaking down um, some of these barriers uh, and now they need to be scaled up so still um, a lot of um, uh, ground to cover here, but this is where we believe that um, we can have a huge impact um, through the reach um, that we can get through supply chain partners um, to really impact um, on these numbers going forward. So also is the case in, in, in the case of uh, sanitation, actually um, the situation is even more acute here. Um, you can see that um, over half the world's population uh, still does not have access to safely managed sanitation and, uh, and waste management, uh, wastewater management. Apologies for the dog in the background. <laughs> um, however, um, uh, what we've seen with sanitation um, is that usually the, the first um, uh, prioritized actions are around water supply uh, in, in terms of uh, companies uh, needs for uh, access to water for operations um, and uh, and sanitation is is usually um, uh, looked at uh, subsequently and um, we're really um, been been advocating for the need to look at again um, these actions at, through the system uh, of the water cycle uh, water use um, uh, drinking water um, sanitation facilities and potential um, pollution uh, of, uh, of water quality um, and opportunities, of course, to uh, reuse uh, water in, in, uh, in circular approaches. Next Cheryl, slide, I just please. want to add something here as well, because I think every yeah. time I see stats, it, they're very shocking, yeah, and I think it kind of brings it back home why, why we're doing what we do. Um, and everybody can play a part in this. I mean, we, we are in the position where we can make a difference, um, through you know through the wash initiative so everyone has a responsibility here if they can make a difference no matter how small you know it does all go to solving some of these issues and uh, it pulls on my heartstrings as I know it does with many others when you see these numbers you know in today's you know environment global environment this is a human basic basic human right um, that sh just should not be a, an issue yeah but it is um, so I just wanted to kind of add that <laughs> my own personal view. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. And I think that the, the next slide actually reinforces, Katrina, um, you know, what you were just saying. Um, uh, so, you know, Sustainable Development Goal 6 is, is about universal access to water sanitation and, and, and hygiene. It's a, um, it is a fixable um, problem. Um, and you can see that we're still quite far away um, uh, from uh, from our, our goal of universal access and in particular in the area of, of sanitation. And so the World Health Organization and, and UNICEF's Joint Monitoring Program um, on uh, Global Goal 6 uh, estimated in 2020 that we would need a, a 4x acceleration um, of these um, numbers in order to, to meet that goal of universal access. So again, um, you know, supply chains and value chains can play a huge role here if we have a joined up approach, a common approach um, to, to addressing um, the, these issues, we can make much more progress um, and really um, meet the goal in this, in this decade. So 
really critically important here um, and, and can't stress that enough. Next slide, please. So in, in, in terms of where the risks are um, for businesses, um, as Katrina mentioned, you know, water sanitation and hygiene access, you know, is a human right um, declared by the United Nations. Um, but in addition to that, um, you know, it, it affects on worker um, health and, and productivity, um, healthy people, healthy company is, is what we hear uh, a lot of our, our member companies say. Um, but, you know, the other area that, um, that, uh, that, that our global companies talk about is, is the security of business critical raw materials. If people are sick um, and unable to perform their functions, um, then that puts um, the, the sourcing of, uh, of raw materials uh, at risk. So there are really material business risks here. Um, also in the area of reputation, trust and, and license to, to operate um, where companies are withdrawing water um, and uh, communities do not have access to um, to water, this can be a, a big risk for, for businesses as well. Um, earlier this year, the um, CDP um, estimated that the price of wash risk is calculated at about six billion amongst just 10 global companies, um, including their, their supply chain. So real money on the table here um, that again, a joined up approach could address. Next slide, please. So on the, on the opportunity side, um, real opportunity to create um, business value um, here as well and um, climate and, and water resilience um, alongside that. So um, a new study that, um, that was just launched uh, in August uh, of this year, um, the results of a, of a two year um, piloting of, um, um, of a reporting system to calculate the financial ROI of investing in, in WASH um, has proven um, some of those assumptions that um, by investing in, in WASH, um, the, you get increased results in terms of productivity gains, um, avoided health costs and contributions to shareholder value. So we have new evidence on this um, now, really critically important for, for companies to make the investments they need um, in, in order to um, uh, to reach their uh, their water stewardship goals. Um, uh, WaterAid, um, also a report they put out um, last year in 2021, um, uh, highlighted that um, there's trillions of dollars in, in value to be gained um, from uh, water and sanitation access. And, uh, and again, um, uh, really through the co-benefits on the, um, the benefits of, of wash on the environment, water quality, um, water quantity, and um, of course, of course, health and safety. Um, we have been a lot, doing a lot of exploration around the climate impacts on uh, wash service continuity. And um, we've also uh, just released a paper, which we'll, we'll show in, in, a, in a little bit uh, at the climate meetings in Egypt uh, two weeks ago, um, which found that access to wash also be, builds people's resilience and the notion of community resilience is, is being emphasized by, by global stakeholders um, and the, the risk that climate change um, poses. So um, more benefits here for, for wash access um, also beyond the financial ROI. Next slide, please. So, um, how do we get there? What is the, uh, the common approach, you know, what, um, where do we think that we can join up our, our efforts? Um, and the, the Wash in the Workplace pledge um, is really a great starting point um, because it uh, it really, um, it has a lot of support materials uh, around it already. Um, it really helps to understand um, uh, the current situation in your own company. I, I do recall those early days in 2013 at the launch of the pledge when many companies were very surprised that they didn't, uh, they couldn't claim 100% access. And, and again, not for the issues of, of willingness or, or financial resources necessarily, but because of the, um, the challenges in different um, um, value chains and, uh, and community contexts. Um, so we do have um, guiding principles around the implementation, uh, suggested process, points of reference, um, tools to facilitate self-assessment, um, and uh, suggestions for um, different uh, behavior change ac activities. Um, and this is something that we've been piloting um, with Xylem and, uh, and many of you this year, uh, many of the suppliers, I think maybe um, 
many of you are, are newly have newly signed the pledge today, but we have been um, working through this implementation plan to help provide that support and connections to um, different WASH um, expert implementation partners. Next slide, please. So in, in terms of how to get started, um, these are the, the steps that are outlined um, by the, the WASH uh, imp pledge implementation plan. Um, first of all, establishing that baseline of understanding um, of the, the different um, uh, risks that you, that you may have um, within your operations around um, water sanitation and, and hygiene access. Um, performing that self-assessment to, to really understand the areas of greatest need um, to prioritize. Um, and then, of course, once those systems are in place, the development of, of uh, improvement plans and reporting and disclosure. And the pilot program that we've been running with um, Xylem and their supplier partners this year has, has um, um, uh, uh, we've run a, a series of webinars um, for each of those steps, you know, with different implementing partners, um, providing expertise uh, along the way. So the other, you know, key um, uh, recommendation here is, is around establishing policies and compliance right away um, after signing the, the WASH pledge um, that can be further developed as you go through your self-assessment um, um, uh, journey. But really, first and foremost, um, understanding local and national laws and regulations and ensuring compliance um, or taking steps towards um, compliance and where um, country, your country uh, or certain countries don't have um, uh, regulations related to, to WASH, um, then endeavoring to comply with the um, United Nations um, standards set out by the WHO and, um, and UNICEF. Once policies and procedures are, are in place, then of course, um, setting up the mechanisms for monitoring um, and measurement of impact. Next slide, please. Um, so this is just a, a snapshot of, of some of the tools, but this is um, for establishing a baseline um, via a self-assessment tool. So this is to understand, okay, um, you know, what percentage of, um, um, of my uh, workforce uh, has access to wash and it's broken down through workplace water supply, workplace sanitation, workplace hygiene, value chain um, wash and community wash. And increasingly, um, actually, we are seeing included here um, gender equity um, indicators. And this really then gives a score, as you can see, um, which is really meant to, um, to help with uh, prioritizing actions in certain areas. Next slide, please. So what is best practice in terms of water sanitation and hygiene access? Um, we also have guidelines you know, on this and, and continuously you know, being improved, but um, I think that you can um, see here really accessible drinking water, uh, meeting quality standards, um, but the infrastructure is not the only um, aspect of this, really the behavior change, the, the operations and maintenance and um, continuous Im improvements are, are also part of the responsibility of, uh, of water supply access. Next slide, please. Similarly, in sanitation, um, you know, access to the infrastructure, which um, has been difficult in, in um, many uh, contexts, particularly uh, related to the waste management um, aspects, but which have been um, more expensive in, in certain contexts, um, but there's been a lot of innovation in this area, a lot of new innovations that uh, are much more affordable, quicker to market, and, um, uh, and also provide opportunities for um, reuse. Um, we found with many companies uh, implementing uh, the WASH pledge in, in different areas, um, even just ensuring that there are um, separate um, toilet facilities for men and women um, has been a, a key action that is an easy one to get quick wins um, uh, through, this, uh, through, through this guidance. Um, uh, safety is also an issue in many contexts um, in, in terms of um, sanitation, cleaning and, and maintenance for, for health, um, uh, sanitary product, uh, menstrual hygiene, um, uh, products and disposable, medical waste um, disposal, um, and the in ensuring that sanitation um, facilities extend beyond um, uh, operations to childcare, canteens, kitchens, and, and health clinics. So 
really thinking about where can people get sick and, uh, and where do we need to ensure reliable and safely managed services. Next slide, please. Hygiene and behavior change, this I think has been <laughs> quite elevated uh, following our COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but interestingly, this, this was best practice um, uh, before the pandemic also, um, but uh, a lot of behavior change uh, really here on the importance of hand washing as the first line of defense against trans tra transmission of disease um, and uh, a lot of vulnerabilities in this area identified through COVID-19 where um, these services perhaps were assumed but not actually functioning. Next slide, please. So the other element that's critically um, important here where um, um, providing access in owned operations can be um, a more straightforward process. Um, equally important is, is uh, ensuring access in, in the communities and homes uh, of workers um, because people can equally get sick um, at home or at work and that will impact on um, business continuity and, and productivity uh, related to, to the health risks. In addition, um, water security uh, related to climate resilience is key here. Um, many investments in WASH um, have had to be reinvested due to climate impacts and new solutions looked at. So if we Think about um, increasing droughts, um, water saving um, technologies uh, have needed to be um, reprioritized or in, in areas that are experiencing increased um, rainfall and, and droughts where um, pit latrines um, and open wastewater treatment facilities had been um, the norm. Again, looking at different solutions that um, pose less of a risk to, um, uh, to uh, breaking down via climate risks. Next slide, please. So these are, are, are some of the, the tools uh, related specifically to the implementation um, of the, the WASH pledge um, uh, and the commitments that, that you're making there. Um, but we also wanted to, to share with you um, some of the other tools uh, um, on the broader network and, and some of the newer themes in, in terms of evolution of, of leading practice that, that we've been working on and that you would also have access to. Um, so one of the, the things in our pilot program um, on support for suppliers that has, has come up is really identification of WASH expert um, implementation partners to work with, especially in communities. If you could go to the next slide, please. Um, the, we wanted to highlight the Water Action Hub um, here, which is a, a tool of the CEO Water Mandate. It's an open source tool um, that is mapping um, um, actions across water stewardship, including WASH, and, and really companies are, are using this to help identify um, different implementing partners or, you know, perhaps other um, companies to work with um, on this implementation in different, um, in different regions. So a really a, a key tool for identifying implementation partners, you know, or other um, um, peer uh, company partners to, to work with on this journey. It's also the opportunity to share your actions um, on WASH, get recognized and, and, um, and be identified um, to, uh, to other companies and uh, implementing partners in your region. Next slide, please. So this is a, a new piece of work that we're really excited about, um, the opportunity to have a standardized accounting and reporting method um, for um, WASH outputs, outcomes, and impacts. Um, uh, again, this will really help us to, um, to monitor progress uh, globally and, and in an aggregate way. Um, and so reporting on, um, um, <clears throat> on outputs has been quite common in terms of numbers of people with, with access, but uh, the actual outcomes of what that means um, for people and the business um, have been less reported. And, and that's really what we want to know. We want to know that, that people are, are healthy um, and, uh, and, and productive um, and that the, the business is, um, uh, is not affected in, in terms of, of continuity and, and growth. So um, this is a, some work on reporting that we'll be launching at the UN Water Conference in March of, of 2023 and then rolling it out thereafter. And so this will be a, a tool for 
um, for you to also report on your actions and their impacts in a in a common way to to be able to um, benchmark and and uh, and share progress. Next slide, please. Another new piece of work is, has been really to um, demystify some of the um, impacts that climate change is having on our investments in water sanitation and hygiene access. And uh, just two weeks ago at the climate conference, uh, as mentioned, we launched this business declaration, um, which was uh, uh, following a year of, of consultation with global wash experts and climate experts um, to really understand what those um, climate specific risks are um, in different regions, uh, in different um, contexts for, for WASH and put together a framework for how to address that um, when um, uh, implementing new programs. And, and again, um, a real emphasis here on the, the types of solutions um, that uh, the, the choices that we're making in terms of, uh, of solutions for access really matter um, in terms of the types of climate impacts that your region uh, may be facing. So this is another tool that um, uh, that we will be developing guidance around and that you all will also have access to to really um, uh, ensure the uh, the investments that you're making in uh, water sanitation and hygiene access. Next slide, please. So some of the some of the benefits that uh, sort of companies tell us that they're um, looking for in, in this platform, you know, is really recognition for the actions um, that, they're, that they're taking. You know, your stakeholders are asking you um, about your, uh, your risks and asking you um, about the, um, uh, the processes that you're putting in place to mitigate those risks. So um, we provide a platform to, to demonstrate that. Also, as mentioned, direct access to leading practice um, uh, via corporate peers, um, as well as WASH expert um, organization members. Um, and, and finally, um, really working together in different working groups to support um, companies on achieving um, their water stewardship and WASH pledge commitments um, to WASH access. Next slide, please. Um, so we are a, a membership organization and uh, we're able to um, produce these uh, support materials and uh, programs um, based on your support. Uh, we'd like to uh, think that this is we've um, uh, lowered the barrier to entry um, as much as we can. The program is heavily supported, as mentioned before, by the UN Global Compact and the CEO water mandate. Um, and, and so that has allowed us to minimize um, the, the membership fees for companies, um, suppliers, and non-corporate partners. So um, this is a, a fee really uh, just for our resourcing and to, um, to continue the, um, the services. Um, and if you have any questions on that, um, happy to, to share, um, but I, uh, we know that other memberships uh, are quite a bit higher than this. And so again, the idea here is to make it easy um, for companies to, um, to, to join and, uh, and receive um, uh, the benefits. Um, I really wanna stress here, as this is a meeting for WASH pledge signatories uh, or those considering um, um, signing that it's, it, there's no fee, <laughs> there's no cost to, signing the WASH pledge and, and taking action. Um, this is really just for the platform, the WASH for Work um, um, platform as a, as a membership organization supporting companies on their, um, on their WASH journey. And next slide, please. Yep, just a, a final word from, uh, from our steering group uh, companies. Um, and then uh, who are advocating that scaling up WASH access is achievable by sharing knowledge and evolving leading practice together. So we, we really hope that, um, that you will join us um, and that we can um, continue to accelerate this journey together to, to realize the impact that we're looking for, but also mitigate um, uh, material business risks. Thank you. And now we can open it up to questions, comments. Um, if you'd like to share some of the actions that, that you've taken in, in, in implementing the WASH pledge, or if you're considering signing the WASH pledge, if you have any questions um, about it, the floor is open. I, I, hello, I'm Donna Lavillette. I'm from Xylem. I work closely with the supply chain team on uh, WASH for Work. Uh, one thing I wanna say with all the uh, 
the beautiful uh, materials that are provided by Wash for Work, uh, we just want to let to know our, our Xylem suppliers that we actually have office hours if you really need help, either filling out your surveys, wanting to know what we do, uh, some of the collateral we have, that's free to uh, if you collaborate with us. So I just want to throw that little pitch in <laughs> that uh, we're here to help you along with Wash for Work. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I see a question in the chat um, about the re recording. Yes, um, the recording will be um, uh, available on the Wash for Work website. And so you can share it with your colleagues, which we encourage. Cheryl, is it something we can also email out to the participants? Yes. Yes, I think, um, Juliana, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we, we can share a link. Is that right? To the video recording? Yeah. We can. Yeah, that'd be good. We can do that. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, this is Nick Rose. I, I'm from Xylem as well, actually. New to the team as well, so similar to Katrina. I've been with, the, been with Xylem for uh, a little over almost seven years now, but uh, new to sustainability. So I just wanted to quickly say thanks for doing the overview. I think it was extremely informative for, for myself and hopefully for some of the suppliers that were on the call today. And uh, just wanted to say thank you to, to all the suppliers that you know took the time to, out of their day today to, to come listen to the presentation. Um, we really look forward to you know actively participating with you guys going forward. And um, I greatly appreciate your interest in, in coming today and, and hearing uh, a little bit about the program. So thanks again, Cheryl. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Great. Well, um, if there's no other questions for, for now, um, I, again, uh, the door is open. Our details are, are here. Also, Donna um, uh, mentioned that uh, Xylem's door is also open here. So um, really uh, keen uh, to, to link up our efforts in the interest of, of accelerating progress here and, and really um, getting to impact. So thank you very much, everyone. And we look forward to working with you.